that's where they crossed over, and that also is the place where, according to tradition, the baptism takes place of Jesus. Right, right down over there, you can see a bunch of churches. <coughs> So this is Jordan, Lebanon is up over here, and that's Syria, and down here is Egypt, and over here is Saudi Arabia, and none of them really like us. But we on the other hand, we like Raja, 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 Raja. Um, is there anybody who wants more knafe? Because we have knafe that's left over. Does somebody want some more? Who wants? sitting in a cave for 13 years in the desert and he comes up with some brilliant ideas what does it have to do with me I have to pay taxes I have to deal with my wife I have to deal with my kids I have to deal with my neighbor I have to deal with the government I have to it's interesting but it, and, and you know but but it's not what what are you going to tell me that's going to be put into my life um, and that I will be able to uh, manifest within my life and um, the other thing is that there's an expression, uh, so you're allowed to um, do a, a period
period of time of fasting or being a hermit, but it's very limited. You have to say, okay, my specific goal is I want to overcome this and this, whatever, and I'm going to do this for 28 days, three months, or whatever, but then you have to go back to society. Because Judaism is a very community-based religion. Yeah. And uh, so you have to go back to society. In Hebrew, there's an expression, A person shall never remove himself from the, 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 all of Israel, from the, the rest of the community. In order to be uh, um, a, a leader, uh, uh, let's say a rabbi in Judaism, the tradition is, is that you have to be married and you have to have kids. Why? Then what you're going to tell us is going to be relevant. You know, how to be, you, you know what, what bugs us, what's our problems. You know, you don't live in some ivory tower that doesn't make, uh, that uh, you might tell us what we need to do, but that doesn't really help. Um, Is there a certain age somebody has to be to be a rabbi? Well, it depends on what period of history, because we've been doing this stuff for a long time, so it depends. But uh, nowadays it's mainly just tests that you have to take. Uh, but, uh, lots of tests. There yeah, lots of tests. But it used to be, for example, let's say, but the, that's the reform movement in seven years of study. So it depends on what type of rabbi you are and uh, and, and, and whatever. Like, um, I have a bus with a bunch of people and you. Uh, I have lots of tests that I have to take to ride on a bus with a bunch of sweet people and you. And what? Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, if it was easy, then what? Barbecue, uh, what? Uh, Pastor James Allen has been telling us till now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 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 he wouldn't have to be telling us this stuff because it would be easy, right? But when he when he challenges us, he challenges us from a from a, from a perspective that he understands what's going on with us. Uh, so it has to be things that are relevant to us uh, for them to make sense. This is the first time I haven't seen the camels. This is usually where that camel is. And there's going to be some more camels. And there's a camel over there. Okay. <laughs> I said there's camels. In the moment, as Raja, the magnificent, veer turns to the right, on the left hand side you can see this building that has graffiti on it that used to be a coffee shop. And it used to sit on the water. Whoa. Up until the 1980s it sat on the water. Now you can see how much the, the, the Dead Sea has receded. Over here, this is used to be a British police station. And on the right hand side you can see camels. Right? You can see the cat there was a few camels over there. On the left hand side in a moment, um, you are going to see some cement structures. They're kind of going to remind you of the Syrian army base that we saw because this is a Jordanian army base, which we took from the Jordanians in the war of nineteen sixty seven, but we asked very politely. Um, <laughs> These built, this army base when we took it, uh, became a, became a uh, kibbutz, kibbutz Kalia. I used to work on this kibbutz. Uh, I used to work with the um, eclats. When we used to go out to work here, this area on a normal day is about 110 degrees outside. And so we used to go and start before dawn, work till 10. After 10, you couldn't even move. And then go out again later on. Okay, so all these buildings, this is what's left of the army base that used to be here, the Jordanian army base. But just there you can see the Dead Sea, and the other side of the Dead Sea is Jordan, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. minutes we are going to get to the Qumran. We're going to walk right in. Uh, I'll go get the tickets. You can bring the people up. Okay. We're going to see a little film. We're going to walk around for a few minutes, see some of the stuff, talk about it. You know, I'll talk about it now. Why at the Qumran they find the Dead Sea Scrolls? Why is this significant? And what are the 
the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls are thousands of documents that are written either in Aramaic, Hebrew, or Greek. They have, and they're divided into a few different groups. One group of, st of, paper, of documents is the Bible, the, the Old Testament. In other words, the five books of Moses and the Chronicles and the Prophets. Excuse me. When we uh, read that version, that's a, the document is a, what we find is about 2,000, 2,200 years old. It's the exact same Bible that we have today, with very few differences. It's basically dotting I's and crossing T's and things, but there's nothing textual that's different, which is very interesting because they just copied it by hand all the time, and, they, and there were no mistakes. So that's one thing. So, which means, from your point of view, that the Bible that Jesus was familiar with is the Bible that we read today. Excuse me? It's, yeah, it's, it's the same document. Um, of course, though, he would have been ready, reading it in Hebrew, not in English. Um, this over here, by the way, is Kibbutz Kaliyah nowadays, with all these trees and everything. That's the new kibbutz. Um, so that's one thing. And the other thing is that it tells us about debates that are going on. Now, the people who write them, you know, some people would call them the ECs. We don't call them the ECs anymore. We call them Yachad, because that's what they call themselves. They're probably in a more extreme brand of ECs. And they talk about what, why everybody else is wrong. They don't tell us what they believe in. But they say, for example, oh, these guys believe in free will, and we know that that's nonsense. So, uh, so we know what the religious debates were at the time. Another thing is a bunch of documents that talk about their rules and the regulations of their community. So that gives us an idea of what's important and what's not important. And then you have a whole bunch of documents which are called the Apocryphi. The Apocryphi are books that were from the time of the Bible but were not included into the Old Testament. And so those documents are... Um, it's just more documents from the time of the Bible, so it gives us more information about uh, and more of the stories and everything else that is going on in the world or within Jewish society at that time. So that's what the Dead Sea Scrolls are. Oh, excuse me. There's a bunch of things about the Dead Sea Scrolls which we're going to see and we're going to be familiar or similar to things that we're going to read about afterwards in the New Testament. For example, the whole issue of the... Um, of the Battle of End Times. <laughs> the Battle of the, for the Forces of Darkness and the Forces of Light. Of course, these people believe that they are the Forces of Light. And, um, and so on. So, it's, uh, uh, that's what this information is. Okay, well, I'll just start with a little bit. I'll just start with a little bit.